All right, we are rolling. I think so anyway. So hello everyone. How are you doing? Welcome to another lovely Sunday from me. Uh, this is live QA episode number eight, I do believe. So I've been doing it for straight now for the past four Sundays. So hopefully we're going to make this a regular thing if everyone's enjoying it. Say a deep lol, yo, how's it going? I, was, I always have to wait for a minute at the start of these things for uh, the comments to come in. If anybody's there, of course, which um, there was a couple of people waiting. So I'm, I'm grateful for whoever those people are. So I guess I'll do a few announcements whilst I'm waiting for um, everybody to join in. As always, uh, with the live stream, I have um, a discount code for all my merchandise. That's 20% off. And that code is live stream, all, cap, all cap locks. And you'll find that code down in the description. So if you go over to my Teespring store and if you pick up anything from there, then you can enter that code and that gets you 20% off. And obviously that I get less uh, profit from each sale for that, but also, I'd like you guys to have a bit of my merchandise, and I think that's quite a nice thing to do for you. Uh, Deep Lol asks, how's life, dude? It's, it's very good. I had a good day today. Um, I got up at 5 a.m. because I went to shoot a video down by the sea near my place, and I was doing it with my guitar. And uh, if you're lucky, I might show you a little bit of that video later because I have done a quick render of it uh, this evening. And it's, I think you'll enjoy that one. It was it was good fun making it. And um, I'm quite tired now because I've been up, like I said, since 5 a.m. And now it's uh, 10 p.m. And I've got myself some Vietnamese coffee uh, to keep me up. I believe this is my second cup this evening. So <laughs> I ran out of regular coffee. So. And um, another thing I'd like to say as well is that I've been, the previous live streams that I've been doing, I've been editing them. So it cut out all the dead air such as this, and I've been making them into uh, podcasts form. So I've been putting them on a website and then I've uploaded them to iTunes. So if I just share my screen briefly with you, um, my entire screen, sure thing, let's do that, yeah. Um, that would be this one here. So I've got episode six and episode seven up on Apple Podcasts. And I also applied to have it on Spotify too. So I believe they do a podcast service now. So you'd be able to catch it over on that one as well. And yeah, um, so if you could subscribe to that, that would be great. And also I have them on the website uh, Podomatic as well. And again, there'll be links for that down below in the description. And um, I'll upload that hopefully after the after the end of this uh, live stream or tomorrow morning, depending on how long this uh, goes on for. So I'll stop sharing for now. There we go, back to me. All right, is anybody else here yet? All right. <laughs> Deep Loss says he can't wait to hear the podcasts on Spotify. Yeah. Um, because I, I'm in South Korea, as you probably already know, but um, Spotify is not available here, unfortunately. So I'm missing out on a lot of good music that way. So, um, but if it does come here, then I'll be sure to grab it. But I've been using the application Deezer, if you're familiar with that. And that's pretty good, but it's missing you know, quite a few albums that I'd like. Yeah, so unfortunately, um, I just stick with that for now, I guess. But apparently my friend um, Ali told me actually Apple Music is available here. So I might try that out, but um, it's cost a bit more than what I'm using at the moment. But I've heard it's got pretty much everything that Spotify has got on it. So 
Okaga, I guess that's how you pronounce your name. Welcome. Ah, I missed a message at the top actually. Nurel, Nurel says he'll um, be teaching at the time, so he can't join today. But uh, if you watch this later, then you can uh, obviously listen to it in podcast form. So, um, you know, I like to listen to a lot of podcasts whilst I drive to and from work. Will's here. How's it going, Will? How are you doing? And drink some coffee. Anyway, uh, far away with the questions. Anyway, um, I think that's all the announcements I have for today. <clears throat> oh, <laughs> John Mark says, "Hi, Steve. Can you tell my friend uh, what's that, Caleb, Caleb, to stop playing RuneScape, <laughs> or do you want to chat with him or something?" <laughs> Uh, Deep Lal asks, what's the name of the stream, uh, of this stream? This stream is just a uh, just general QA this week, but I do have uh, one article that I wanted, wanted to touch upon quickly. So again, I'm just going to share my screen, so bear with me. And like last week, um, I'll just get the full screen. This is another, I've zoomed it quite in for you so you can read it quite easily. But this is by Nick Hunter. Um, he runs pretty much runs the uh, Fecking Bahamas website, and um, the title is crappy. You know, you know what sound got in the math rock band, uh, but that, that bit's not of interest to me. It was um, talking about the history uh, of how the genre, if you want to call it a genre, has evolved. And um, if you go to the website, I've linked it actually down below in the description already. But uh, it just has a brief overview of the how things got started, you know, with such as Black Flag, and then how that moved on to more like you know Bitch Magnet and Slint and Don Cab, early Don Cab stuff, which is a lot more aggressive and you know a lot of distortion going on and uh, more angular style of playing, um, and then it then it spirals into how did uh, you know Don Caballero's for respect turn into you know TTNG's disappointment island or you could even say animals uh, for example but basically it goes on to say after all of this um so it gives how the scene uh evolved from the chicago uh scene at the time and then basically at the end here it says math rock formed as a subgenre of the larger indie rock boom in the late 80s. That's where it started. And then the early sound is characterized by distortion heavy guitar and complex rhythmic experimentation, which is what it sounds like, right? And then the shift towards a soft and melodic, albeit fast and complex guitar driven sound likely happened in Chicago in the late 90s. So I thought that was quite interesting. They do they do have the history of math section here as well so if you haven't checked that out that one's also really good to see so anyway i'll stop sharing my screen for now there we go back to me um so what so that got me thinking a bit more sorry a bit more about the uh, evolution you know of the genre and stuff like that and the, when i think of like the earlier stuff when i think of like when people mention bands like slints and shellac of, as being math rock bands, you know, they're quite you know, heavily distorted guitars in a way. You know, Slint has a lot of clean, but more like post rock elements. And early Don Cab stuff as well, like it is much more aggressive and angular and the way it's changed now. I think that kind of, um, there's like some ties, cohesive ties between, you can take a band such as like Covet or TTNG, much more clean guitar tones and inc inc intricate riffs and music. And that's also called math rock, but also, you know, these other bands, earlier bands, which sound nothing like that are called math rock too. So I've, that kind of put the, the missing link together for me. So I, I thought that was just an interesting thing to talk about if you guys want to talk about it or not or chime in on the uh, subject that'd be that'd be great to give us something to talk about <laughs> no problem no problem John Mark hey Kartrick is it Ramesh Ramesh yeah I'm doing well thanks as I said um if people are just chiming in a bit tired I've been up since 5 a.m 
I went down to the old beach and I recorded a video for our um, mountain song, Incandescent, doing a guitar playthrough of that one. And uh, got down there and I was recording the video. Then I noticed I had severe uh, bedhead and my hair was uh, sticking out at the back here, which it is all right. It's still a bit now, but I was just like, oh. And then it looks like, um, you know, I just got out of bed basically, but hopefully people are be, uh, they forgive me for that one. The video looks pretty cool. So um, perhaps I'll, uh, one second. Oh, did not mean to open that. Sorry if that was uh, coming through your speakers very loudly then, but I'll I'll turn the volume down a bit. So uh, yeah, I'll show you a, a quick render, um, a pre sneak preview if you'd like of the upcoming incandescent um, guitar play through video that I made today. So I'm going to share my screen. So here's my lovely self at the beach. Um, so yeah, we just play. Oh, I can't even get to the play button. There we go. When I render it fully, it obviously look better because this is just a quick render. I've, I recorded it in 4K, and you can see my lovely bed head. I just got various scenes like this. I thought it looked quite nice. And then when it comes to after the break, I tried to get all clever with the stabby parts and I tried to get two of me on screen. So I'll just get that. Here we go. Look, get me two of me in the same shot. So <laughs> watch it one more time if you like. <laughs> uh, it, is, it turned out pretty good, I think. Anyway, I'll stop sharing that. So there we go. So what 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 do you think to that? Does, does it look alright so far? And John Mark says it looks tight. Thanks. Yeah, I'm sorry if I blew your eardrums with the start there. I had the volume at full, so. Hmm. <clears throat> I got a good question here. Someone asked, um, was user Pi Pace Pace, I guess you say it, user Pace. Uh, how do you see the future of Mathrock in the world? Well, I think like what I see at the moment, like current trends, is kind of diversifying into other genres. You know, like if you think of bands like Polyf Polyphia and um Chan and stuff like this, they're really getting out of there. And obviously there are got elements of um well mainly their sound is not math rock is it but it's got elements of math rock and i see it's gaining a lot of interest especially with bands like uh, covet as well like you know they were on um total guitar magazine i believe the current issue of it so that's that's pretty big news i would say you know like they're getting recognition in like the uh the gen the gen general the general um general guitar sphere of stuff. Um, that's how I'm going to say that. <laughs> yeah, but I, yeah, I think that's going to happen. And it's, it's changing all the time, right? That was, you know, that history article, you know, the brief history of math, uh, math rock we just saw there, how it's changed so much from its early roots, right? But there's so many branches off of it now. And my favorite part of it is the emo tinged math rock. And that's what you know my band plays and that's what i aim to play because that was the kind of stuff that i really enjoy when i when i was growing up and then i got into math rock or you know styles that are associated with math rock later on so i put the two together really and what what do you what do you guys and girls think what do you think how do you think it's going to change and evolve but um there's because it's such um, a guitar focused genre genre if, we, if we're going to call it a genre of music it's yeah it's very appealing to people and you know so many companies are jumping on the bandwagon of uh you know um pitching their products through uh like math rock guitarists because they're kind of like the next 
the new generation of uh, virtuoso, virtuoso kind of late 80s, 90s kind of guitarists in a way, right? So people are interested because they see like fast playing and tapping and all these kind of things. So that's a very good um, platform to promote stuff on. And also I believe that, you know, if you're not, if you're just beginning guitar, that's, you know, when you think of when you started playing guitar, who your idols were. And if you're really into like the uh, more virtuoso kind of guitar styles, then th those players definitely are going to appeal to a lot of people. So yeah, that's just my thoughts on that one. So how can I get to the, there we go. How many people are here? I forgot how to check how many people are here. Analytics, is that the one? It says there's, there's a grand total of 12 people here at the moment, so. It's lovely. And um, what have we got? Oh, we got a non-related question from the Wondering Rabbit. Hey there, brother. Just wanted to ask, how do you download GTA 5 on Android for free? I do not know, but perhaps you could use an emulator um, from the App Store. But GTA 5, what console? Well, it was on PS3, right? Was it? You could probably get a PS3 emulator for that one. There you go. That's some good advice for you. Kainan. Uh, hey, Kainan. 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 I am terrible at pronouncing people's names, and I'm sorry for butchering them. Uh, he or she asks, do you know a guitarist called... Uh, Toru, Toru Kitajima, Kitajima, he is a Jap, he is a, is Japanese and does math. Like, um, I'm not aware of him. Uh, he or he or she, I guess that's a guy's name in Japanese. Um, I, you know, I do like Japanese math rock, but I don't know many Japanese math rock style bands. You know, the ones that I like are well, best one in my opinion is Toe. And I like um, Light as well. Their new records are good. And who else as well? So do you know the band Pens Plus? They're a fantastic band as well. Yeah. And I'm um, not really a big fan of... Oh, I forget their name now. What are they called? Um, it's going to book me now. Well, there's a picture of her as well, if you've heard of them. They have an album called C. That one's really good. If you haven't checked that one out before, I, I recommend that one. That one's very, um, I'd say, like kind of twinkly math rock style, if we're going to, you know, define it in some way. And um, what else as well? What am I thinking of? I forget their name, though. That's really annoying. I even went to see them live. So anyway, they'll come back to me soon. Um. Yeah, I know, um, I don't know how you say his name, Ichi Ichika Nito. Yeah, he's a crazy-ass guitarist. I can't, people keep asking me, can you do, like, how to play like him? I can't do that because I can't play like him. So, <laughs> yeah, because he's just, yeah, he's on another level with that stuff. Yeah, Mumai, tri tri Trico, I believe that's how you say it properly. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't really dig them, and I think, I worked out that because just there's so much going on with the harmony and the the um the melodies and the harmony that go together then putting vocals over the top of them doesn't really work in in my opinion anyway in a lot of songs so it gets a lot sounds a lot quite messy and there's nothing really that hooks me in there so yeah but um they got some good songs but overall um yeah I'm not just not really that drawn to them so uh, John Mark says, you're Steve, fave song of the week you've been listening to so far. Well, that one's an easy one. Um, it is uh, by the band Holding Patterns, which is, uh, I think it's that what, what their name is. Um, they are uh, ex-members of, if you remember the band, um, again, I'm just terrible with names. 
So the album's got not a uh, crash crash of rhinos that's the one and they have a new album uh they have an album out sorry their, their debut album and the song is called uh what, what's that one called on that one dust dust that's it yeah dust so if you search for holding patterns and the song dust it's just got this um really cool interlude section and in the end it's just got this like repeated vocal shouted and it's just full of energy and it just makes you you know when I go out and uh, tackle the day, well, then you listen to that song. And that's what I listened to this morning, actually, when I was driving to go and shoot that video at 5 a.m. It was getting me in the mood, so. Um, a Russian guy, I believe. I'm sorry, I can't read your name. He says, uh, have you listened to bands mixing math rock with post-hardcore? Like Drive, like, yeah, Drive Like Joe, and yeah, yeah, for sure. I think... Drive Like Joe is really, uh, really good. Uh, what's another one as well? Like, um, like Mass Icon is a bit too brash for me, but they, you know they got some good stuff. That's another one of those kind of bands. And um, yeah, like Yank is it Yank Crime? Yank Crime. That that album's really really good. Uh, the Wondering Rabbit says, um, also, I want to thank you for introducing me to Math Rock, the world. You've taught me so much. Well, that, that's awesome. Thank you for your kind words. Yeah, uh, I'm still learning a lot myself, and um, I'm trying to, you know, just put, you know, I, I want to make sure that what I'm putting into my videos is is, is true and accurate, accurate, ac accurate, accurate, that's it, <laughs> to the best of my knowledge, so I'm not teaching you guys. Uh, guys and girls, the, the wrong kind of things, right? Or giving you the wrong information. Yeah, so, um, and just trying to stick to us, you know, one topic for a video and not trying to do too much in that. I find that works a bit better and it's easier to follow as well. So, <laughs> you don't have to apologize uh, for your name being unreadable. That's completely fine. I just don't know the Russian language. That's all. So. And then uh, underneath that, we have a Japanese person. And I'm sorry, I can't read your name. And he says, you're a good player. Well, thank you very much. All right, so what we got? Uh, okay. Uh, Deep Loss says, my school is going to have a silent studio soon. And there's is this girl I think I like. I want to form a band with her. Her on guitar, me on bass, but I feel like that's not a good idea. Why, why, why don't you think that's a good idea? I mean, I need more context than that. But what's a silent studio, by the way? Just like proper proper studio kind of thing? Yeah, John Mark says, yeah, uh, got to check out that song then. Yeah, yeah it's, it's it's on Bandcamp and it's getting a lot of support. And so you, it's it's just a fantastic record overall. Yeah, you know they got two two singers, I do believe. So that I like that kind of contrast of two voices in a band. Right, it can work really really well. Um, Salam Salad Mansa <laughs> Salad Mansa. Sorry, that's a great name. Uh, have you listened to Black Midi? If so, what are your thoughts and what have you heard? I have not heard of them before, but I'll um jot that down on my handy notepad. And I will check them out. I like to look at some, you know, new bands once a week. You can find some good music that way. Uh, Carter Alexander asks, do you know any math style bands that use extended range guitars? Uh, the ones that I'm aware of is y Yvette Young from Covet. She uses, um, what's it, Strandberg. Seven string one. I think it's seven strings. Someone will someone correct me on that anyway. And yeah, she uses that. You get that kind of low, low drone from the obviously the seventh string, whatever that's tuned to. I believe it's tuned to B if it's in standard. And I'm, I'm, again, I only play six strings and I've never touched a seven string, so I, I know zero really zero. I know nothing. Sorry, I should say about extended range guitars. Yeah. Um, I'd be interested to try one. I've, I've, I've yeah, but I've never had the opportunity to. So maybe if I do, I'll, I'll try one out. But I, I'll just be like, what do I do with this extra string at first, right? So, well, you know, yeah, we'll see. Uh, 
Uh, John Mark says, what pick do you use? Any signature? Let's talk about math rock picks coming. I'd so, I'd so buy them. <laughs> no, not at all. Like, um, but I don't think that's going to happen soon. Yeah, I've been checking out, um, if you know the company Stone, Stone Age picks, the dude, he gets like fossilized wood, you know, like all different kind of like colors and it looks awesome. And he makes them into picks and... I've been thinking of picking one of those up because it looks really, really nice. But the picks I use are, um, someone asked me this the other day, actually, but I used the Dunlop. I'm not sure how clear that's going to be, but basically that's the Gator Grip Dunlop. And that's 1.5 millimeters. And I like uh, just a, you know, like a stiff plectrum, but a stiff pick, I should say. Um, but I'm also... Don't mind like the Jazz Free XL size. That's probably like what is a bit got a bit more give to it and different texture. But I like these ones just because when I play live, they don't slip out of my hands because they've got you know the grip. But the grip does wear off them, such as this one. And um, yeah, one point fourteen millimeters is the one below that. And I used to use two two mil, but that was a bit too much. I found. Now here I got, um, when you get JHS pedals, you get like the gravity JHS pick. And I really, um, I thought I liked it at first, but I really don't like these plectrums. <laughs> They're too, too solid, yeah, too grating for me anyway. <laughs> Will says eight string is where it's at. I think it's nine string that we really need. All right, so Silent Studio is kind of like a normal studio, but in my score, it's like off the side of a place for students to study. So you can only hear music through headphones. Well, I've done that before. Um, it, it, my friend Andrew, we, we we did a song together, and we would meet up at a coffee shop couple of, for a couple of months, actually, every weekend, pretty much. And we'd use these like, little eight-track thing, and we'd plug both into that and then use headphones and we just jammed like that and we were just throwing ideas off each other it worked quite well actually i found um you didn't have like uh i guess you just concentrated on what you were doing instead of talking to each other right because you both got headphones in so you're just playing off each other that way but but we've got like you know, we both know each other quite well, so we knew like how to play off each other, basically. But if you're starting with someone new that you'd never met before, then it might be best just, you know, invite them along one time and, you know, let's try out a session together. And you, you'll soon know if there's any chemistry there. You know, if it's if it's not going anywhere, then, you know, you don't have to feel bad. You know, you just don't don't meet up again and, you know, try something else. Right. That would be my advice for you. John Mark says, hell yeah, I got jazz free max groups. Yeah, I like those too. They, those the um the smaller ones. Yeah, I used to use those for a while actually. Yeah. Because what I was doing was I was buying regular jazz, you know, the smaller jazz ones, and I was um using um what do you call it, a knife just to uh you know serrate into it and so I got a bit of grip to it. And then I realized they do like the max grip ones, so I picked those up. Mm. Uh, Deep Lull says, have you, have you all heard of this project called Sungazer by Adam Neely and Sh uh, Sean Crowder? Um, they're like technical jazz, so like very maffy. Okay, well, I, I like Adam Neely's stuff, but I haven't checked that out. So, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely check that out. <laughs> Will says, 69 string, am I right? <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. I like playing with 32 frets. Non-technical non jazz. Uh, 
Uh, Carter Alexander, he asks, uh, well, he doesn't ask, sorry. He says, um, the band I play and uses an eight string. Okay, interesting. Uh, to keep that math rock sound, we use Fishman pickups exclusively in the split coil sound and then roll a good amount of bass in order to keep the twinkle sound. Okay, roll off roll off uh, roll off a good amount of bass sorry okay so yeah fishman pickups i'm not i'm not really versed in that kind of thing but yeah sounds about right to me so if you got any um recordings of your stuff i'm quite intrigued to hear what that sounds like you know if you uh throw a comment on later or a link or something i'll uh, i'll go check that out so It's a bit bit quieter in here tonight. There's usually a bit more a bit more questions. I'm usually struggling to uh to get through the questions, but this is quite nice pace, I guess. I should have um, set up the guitar for this one, maybe, and uh, jammed in between. <laughs> a bit too late for that now, unfortunately. But I, I will say um, I've retweaked my pedal board again. I've um, gone back to going to stereo, and I've worked it out, so it sounds quite nice now. Uh, I'll show you that again quickly, if you want. It's like I change this every week, so you're probably sick of seeing it by now, but there we go. Let's take that out so we can get it up. Nice and propped up here. Yeah, I gotta sort the cables out. It's a bit messy. Anyway, so now got I'm a shorter like a boombox. Um, yeah, so now I've got this, and again I'm going stereo out with the JHS buffered splitter there, and I got this as the preamp into this, and it sounded quite nice. And then um, I have the Earthquakers arrows on, always on sound. Same with the MXR to add a bit of grit. Uh, compressor on as always. Core sound is the chorus pedal with the reverb, and uh, I got this vibe, vibe pedal here that I bring in sometimes. And then for a boosting gain, I'm using the uh, Tone City uh, Dry Martini pedal, which is yeah, it's got this kind of um, kind of cocked wah sound to it that I don't particularly enjoy. So if I ever bother, I'll upgrade it eventually. So that's this week, this week's uh, ir ir iteration of my pedal board, and it probably changed by next week. <laughs> I can't get it up, Will. <laughs> it's too heavy. Uh, Muma asks, "What's your thoughts on f Firmed? Do you mean Third? Is that is that a band, Free ND?" Uh, Mull asks, would you put a compressor in front of a distortion or distortion in front of a compressor? Uh, the general rule for compressors is what I know from what my knowledge is, is you put it at the start of your chain, but um, usually for distortion, yeah, it would go after after the compressor. Otherwise, you're just going to amplify the signal if you put it after your distortion pedal. But if you want that sound, then that's up to you. But um. I just have it on really for clean tones. I don't really use it that much when I, well, I don't really play that with that much gain, if I'm honest anyway. But if I do kick on a lot of gain, then I'll turn the compressor off because it sounds very, it too too squashed, right? And if you're going to record anyway um, in a studio and stuff, I find it works really well for clean. But when you use gain, when it gets mixed, it's just going to be compressed anyway. So you're just adding compression on top of compression and it can sound really, really flat that way. So I wouldn't recommend that. Yeah, like Will says, depends, you know, what you want, whatever sounds good, basically. You may just use your ears to be the judge, right? And, you know, uh, there's plenty of times where I thought something sounded good, but then I try it a different way, and, you know, I like that for that, that period of time, so. Simon Homland asks, uh, any easy licks for getting into math rock for a newbie? Uh, what did I learn when I started? But maybe try out. It's not really strictly math rock, but you know, it's get lumped, it gets lumped in with it. But try um, uh, the riff from 
FC premix, you know, if you take it slowly, it sounds quite difficult, I guess, if you're a newbie, but it's not that difficult. Just take your time with it and, you know, don't try and play it at full speed, obviously, straight away. Uh, use um, a metronome and slow it down and bring it up to speed. And uh, make sure you always uh, warm up before you play as well. Otherwise, you're going to run into problems later on. Uh, I would say that one is a good one to learn. Uh, some other riffs. I mean, uh, let's let's all chime in and um, help Simon Homeland. I guess I'm just—he's he, probably just going to get really crazy, complicated recommendations now. So I'm sorry about that. <laughs> but I'm just consulting my memory of riffs that I learned and riffs that are probably quite quite uh, not not too challenging to learn at first. Um, someone child. I think I think of some riffs. Bands that are like nothing's coming to mind. Latch on, so mm. anyway, I think about that, and as I go on, I know I'll I'll throw some uh, I'll throw some recommendations maybe down below later. All right, Deep Law says, which kind of delay is good for that to get that like glitchy repeating sounds. Mylex does this cool delay effect. And I have ideas of a riff that would work with that. OK, uh, with that one, I'm not so sure about delay pedals, because like I said, I don't really uh, particularly use them. And they don't really gel well with the way that I play and the way I write. So I can't really help you too much on that one. I know the, is it, which brand is it they do? Um, the thing's called Orb Orbiter or Orbit. I think it might be Maris pedals, but they're quite expensive. But I believe that one will do that kind of sound. Yeah. So but I'm sure someone in the someone must know more than I do about delay pedals. Sorry. Oh yeah, the um, the guitar part for Never Meant. Yeah, the intro of that one. I think that's a good riff to learn at first as well. That one's not too difficult. Uh, Simon, si Simon, sorry, Simon Holm, Hol, 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 Holm, 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 sorry, Holm. <laughs> wow. Um, it says any modes or scales you prefer. Uh, for me, I just tend to write in major or minor keys, mostly major keys. So I'll, I'll just, if I use a particular thing, I'm not really thinking about it consciously, but it's always going to be like a major or minor scale or it just reflects the chord. So if I play like a, a minor seven flat five, and if I do some lead part with that, you know, like something to connect to the next chord, then I'll just use a, a minor seven flat five arpeggio, like some notes from it. It would be two, you know, three or four notes, basically. Uh, as, as for modes, I don't really write any modal music, but I do mess around with them from time to time and make some loops with my uh, loop pedal there. They're quite good fun to do. And I always find, you know, to me, Lydian sounds really, really nice. If you've tried that one, it has a really major but kind of tense feel to it. And I also like um, Dorian as well. That the kind of uh, because it's got that major sixth, that raised sixth in it. It's, it's it doesn't sound quite as minor as a minor scale, like the natural minor. Yes, they're probably two. Well, two modes that I like the best. So. <laughs> I told you, I told you somebody would say that. Zeropa Baby says, Biblical Violence by Hella. Yeah, good luck learning that one. <laughs> you probably could, you know, you just slow it down very, very slowly, you'll get there. So, <clears throat> Moore says, The first math songs I learned were Screamers and Never Men. Do you mean Screamers by Sleepy Dog? Because that's, I, I said, that's pretty challenging to learn as a first song so hey hey anus repairman is in the house hey man how's it going i'm doing well thanks how about yourself ah uh, that glitchy kind of sound yeah well maybe the i know that the boss 
sorry, I should say, um, Zarapa Baby says, uh, doesn't Nick from Terramella just use the bus digital delay pedal for doing the glitchy kind of sound? Now, I believe that's the hold function on, you're thinking of the DD3, and that one just, if you step on it, I briefly holds whatever you're playing, I do believe. I've never tried it out, so. But um, the dude in Delta Sleep also does that as well. I'm pretty sure I saw it on the audio tree session. Uh, user Pesh, uh, he says, in your band, band camp account, I only find one song. Where can I get more songs? Do you mean my band's band camp? Um, this band, Mountains, or like my actual band camp? Because yeah, on my actual band camp, there's only one song on there because that's all I've ever really released. But I do have a bunch of songs that I would like one day like to record, but I'm not 100% happy with them yet. And they're just a work in a work in progress, a long, a long work in progress. They, they take the back seat and everything that I'm doing at the moment, unfortunately. As Robert Babe says, he really likes to cro chromatic scale. <laughs> you know the song um, Sugar Coated Sour by the Dillinger Escape Plan? I know this because I learned it, but the solo, the very start of the solo, uh, that's all a chromatic run, like going up the fretboard, and it's, it's, it's all picked it's crazy fast. I had a hard, a really, really hard time learning that song, but it was it was a pretty awesome experience once I got it done. And I've said I've mentioned this before, but when I was at university, I had to do two um, com not compositions. I had to do two covers by myself in front of an audience, and you had to play to a backing track, and you had to choose two songs that contrasted with each other to show that you could play. I guess be more adept to show that you're adept in playing more than one style on the guitar. So I chose the song uh, Reeling in the Ears by Steely Dan, which is a classic. Love that song. And I chose Sugar Coated Sour by the Dillinger Escape Plan. So they're worlds apart from each other. And uh, I, from, from my vague memory of the whole thing, I played Reeling in the Ears quite well. And I remember as I was playing at the the cameramen who were filming it, they were like dancing along to it. Like it's quite, it's quite funny to see. And I had a, like a proper backing track that I got from, from a magazine. And then um, the Dillinger Escape Plan one, I just, I just exported the uh, MIDI file from Guitar Pro. It just sounded like ass. It was terrible. And I played to that one and everyone was just like, what the hell is going on? But I, I think because no one could tell what the song was that I kind of got away with any mistakes that I played, which was quite a few because it was, you know, putting you on the spot and I'm not very good uh, with, you know, nerves and stuff like that. So I got very anxious before playing it. So but it was all in all a good experience. It was good fun. Deep Lost says, what do you think of math rock with hip hop slash trap style beats? You know, I've heard the word trap thrown around a lot and I sound like an old man, but I'm still not sure what that means. But uh, Polyphia stuff, uh, I, I've, I've never gone out my way to listen to their albums and stuff, but my the drummer in my band is a good is a fan of them and he always links their like latest music videos and stuff. And I enjoy those videos, if I'm honest. I think it's pretty good. They're very creative and it works really well i think like it's just funny how i listen to the tracks and the guitars are cleaner than the bass the bass is the you know the thing that's driving it with you know a lot of, not a lot of gain but you know it's got a lot bit of dirt on it so uh anus repair man uh, he says in a few days in a few days i'm gonna be writing some post slash math rock with a drummer in a few days you got that twice there <laughs> uh any bands you recommend i listen to before writing stuff well I, I can't i don't know you all that well and i don't know what you listen to so i can't really give you any recommendations but you write if i know it sounds really simple but just write what you know what you like what you what the way you play guitar, right? That's your style. So I, I don't think you should um, necessarily try and aim to play like a particular band, but you obviously the songs that you learn when you've been playing guitar and the music that you listen to, that's all going to come through when you start putting music together. And that's what, you know, such a wonderful thing about it, right? It's like 
is that you, you, no one can beat you and no one can play guitar your way. So that makes you unique in a way. And the stuff that you're going to write, no one else is going to write like that, right? So it's, um, I guess what I'm trying to say, because I'm not very good with words, as you probably guessed, but uh, just start playing and trying to see see what comes out and then analyze it later right and if you're analyzing it from the get-go you're not going to get very far so just put some if you're doing post rock and stuff just put some picking patterns together put some chord structures together see how it sounds how it comes out and you know re record it on your phone or whatever after the session and reflect on it and think like perhaps this could be better or i could change this or i like this part but i could perhaps you know add this texture to it or something like that you know try and get the song structure and what you're playing down first before you worry about like any kind of a timbre and tone tonal changes you know using pedals and such just you know, that that you know you got to have that um that core to it right that you know the foundation before you start um you know making too many changes or whatever you're going to do in, in the long run but yeah um just go in and see what happens basically you know if there's if there's some chemistry there then you know it's going to work but i can't yeah i don't think really any bands is going to give you any inspiration well they're going to give you inspiration right but it's not going to change the way that you're going to play when you go into the session i'd say <laughs> born here says, did someone say trap music <laughs> I, I did, but as I said, I'm not really f familiar with what that is. So, yeah. Rami uh, Khrushchev, 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 that's going to be like a Russian name, right? Uh, I think it's close to grunge mood, isn't it? Is that, is you referring to trap music? <laughs> referring to what would be another clever word for trap? <laughs> stuck music everyone here says happy to see you're still doing these streams uh well, thanks for joining again and thanks for your um uh your super chat the other day that was super nice like i said i believe you were my very first super chat so you can feel uh feel um no, i feel great with that knowledge i guess so uh, deep girl um how long do you play guitar so how long have i played guitar uh i don't know exactly when i started but it was at middle school and i i would have gone into year 10 so i would have been 14 or 15 years old i'm now 30 so yeah uh so 16 years i'd say yeah around that i should i should be better i did take on and, not on and off, I should say, but after I finished university, I played bass in a band for a while, and I wasn't playing guitar so much. I was playing. I was working at um, a company called Game in the UK, and you're selling computer games, and uh, I just played a lot of computer games, basically, because <laughs> I was just getting discount on games and stuff. So I'd play bass when I was at band practice, and I'd play games when I was at home. So that was my life for about two or three years. So. Uh, Anus Repairman says he came out with an album back in March, but that was with a different drummer, and that one was a lot more post rock. Yeah, I saw that you uh, posted that on uh, on Inst Instagram, I do believe the album cover for it. So I'll I'll have to check that out. But so you're trying with a different drummer now. So if you got some of the same songs, then see how they, you know, how what they put over your songs, right? Uh, Deep Law's got to go. Uh, thanks for thanks for joining. You got the conversation started, so I appreciate that. Uh, Carter says, I learned you can put links in a stream, but to find our single from early in a stream, you search for uh, Band Paro on Bandcamp. Okay, thanks. I'll, I'll, you tell me what I do, um, Carter. I'll, I'll write that down. So I don't have to look back later because I, I know I probably will miss it or won't look. So hey, Sato is here. He's late. Thanks for joining again. And we got um, this one I can read. So it's Korean. So it's um, Umjala. Umjala. I guess it's not a name. It's Umjala. Um, what's Umjala? Well, he says, hi, hi. How's it going? That's good. I got I got, I got some, some Korean fans, which is pretty cool. You know, the Mathrock is not that... Uh, well, it's not 
it's definitely not popular. It's very, very, very underground. Um, at one time, there was a few Mafi kind of bands on the scene here. Uh, you know, my band being one of them, Mountains. But these days, yeah, it's uh, quite quiet, I guess. But I haven't been really paying attention too much to the, to the uh, underground scene so much, if I'm honest, recently, because they've not been playing here. So um, next thing we're doing, uh, I told you the drummer, our drummer, Joel, he moved to Vietnam uh, back in, when was it, March, April time? So... Uh, we haven't been able to play shows in Korea since then, but we are going to play in Japan August, end of August, and that's the last week of August, I think like 28th till the 1st or 2nd of uh, September, I do believe. And we've got we've got a couple of shows booked already on the Saturday, and we'll be doing one of those practice room space shows, if you heard of them in Japan, where they have... Um, they have a gig at a practice room and everybody stands around the uh the band in the middle and we're going to be playing with um i believe it's uh is it Lock lockto on that one again so we we played with them last time we we went to japan so i was hoping to be able to play with pens plus because they got back together recently but they're impossible to get hold a hold of and yeah so if anybody knows pens plus please send them my way and say we're looking for a show <laughs> that'd be great And um, apparently a doctor now. Arch uh, stays and says, I fart every day. I think everybody does. So um, I say that's quite normal. You have nothing to worry about. All right. So I, um, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to get going soon. I've got about another 10 minutes. So um, if you want to get some last questions in, that would be great. Yeah. Umjala says, I hope Mafrock uh greatly in Korea. So yeah, hopefully it gets uh, some more recognition. That's for sure. Yeah. Are you doing any bands yourself? <laughs> Arch says he's very relieved. You're welcome. Oh, I was going to say, um, someone asked me recently why I took down my um, the original seven, seven, uh, what was it, seven famous math rock riffs. Uh, well, I haven't taken the video down, but I made it unlisted. So you can still find it if you look on my on my website. Basically, I'm redoing that video because I can play better than I did back then because that was like two, two and a half years ago, I think now. And um, I'm also going to change some of the riffs because I believe some of those riffs are not exactly uh, famous in the sense of famous math rock riffs, which is not that famous at all, right? So I'm, I'm looking forward to that one. So I've been practicing that one, uh, practicing riffs for that one recently. And I've been posting some of them on my Instagram and... If you want to follow me on Instagram, it's just at let's talk about math rock, all one word. And there's no apostrophe between the uh, T and the S of let's. Uh, Mumal asks a good question. He says, what got you into playing guitar? Well, uh, it's my best friend, Will, who's in this chat. I don't know if you're still here, but because um, I was listening to like, just general mainstrop, mainstrop, mainstream uh, pop music and like pop, pop rock kind of stuff. You know, you used to get those. I don't know if you still get them in England, but they're like now CDs, and they would have like all the hits that were going on for a particular month or something like that. So I used to buy those ones, and that's how I really heard about music and um, made yeah good friends with Will. And I went around his one time, and he played drums in a band. And then I was, it was like the best thing ever to see at that time. And then I got introduced to like rock music, you know, like I think he showed me like, I believe it was Nirvana and Foo Fighters and maybe Green Day, uh, Beastie Boys as well, I do believe. And um, because he played drums, yeah, I was kind of like interested in, got interested in the guitar somehow. And then, you know, I, I went and got, um, I started doing uh, I took music, We well, we both took music, sorry, at middle school, and I was playing, like, the classical guitars, but playing, like, power chords and stuff on them on these really terrible classical guitars. And then I think my first electric guitar I got was out of a catalogue. I think that's right. It's such a long time ago, but it was um, a Squire. I guess it was a Bullet Stratocaster. And I remember at that time, I got it, and I was like, I don't know how to tune it. And... Um, 
so I was like, how to tell it's in tune or not? Because I didn't have a I didn't have a tuner like you know back back then it wasn't really like a lot of clip on tuners or anything like that. So I remember I went online and I looked at a picture of a a bullet strat and then I looked at the picture where the tuning pegs were and then put it on on that to I, I thought like if I put it in the same place it would be in tune. Like I know that's so stupid, but that was what what you like when you first start guitar, right? <laughs> well, me anyway, my dumbass, but. Yeah, then I eventually got a tuner. So I just I I just learned those kind of stuff, that kind of stuff. Just general, you know, you just your general like uh, grunge and rock stuff when I first started playing. Uh, Deep Girl says, "Is your profile picture a reference to your band, the mountains in the background?" I guess it is in, in a sense. Yeah, I, I wanted it to be like uh, me at the front, and then I I really like the. Uh, Algon on Cadwaladder, some um, you know their album with the trees on it. So I got the trees in there as a reference, and then the 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 apartment blocks that you see there. That's either um, from the one video I did where I played outside. I kind I kind of tried to get that theme in there, and um, yeah, just just general things like that. I, I, it turned out quite nicely, I, I think. Yeah, I'm happy with that one. And uh, like I said, it, I did buy it from my t-shirt store but it needs to ship from the states so it takes quite a while to get here but i look forward to seeing that one and someone did buy one and they tagged me on instagram so i got to see what it looks like and it, it comes out it came out really nicely actually and it, mentioning that I, I just say again that i do have a discount for my merchandise during this live stream and i'll leave it up for about 24 hours afterwards but that's 20 20 percent discount and that's with code live stream and that's all capital letters and one word and you'll find that down in the description so basically you go to my teespring store click on something go through to the checkout and then you can enter the code there and that'll get you a lovely 20 percent off um Mumas has also thanks a bunch for all your teaching um and all the videos that i do here so well, thank you that's very kind of you so one of the main reasons why i do this to help help everybody out and yeah, when I started, I was doing stuff maybe that was a bit too aimed at um, more high end of uh, guitar stuff. So I realized that a lot of people that are watching my channel are just getting into playing math rock or the beginners at guitar themselves. So I have more things aiming at like, you know, the simpler stuff, you know, the more approachable stuff of, you know, chords and what scales you can play with these chords and these kind of things. But it's 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 one of those things. It's really hard to teach beginners math rock, right? Because it is a lot of it is quite difficult to play. But if you just approach it thinking that everything is pretty much syncopated, it's not on the beat. So that's that's one thing to always remember if you want to kind of write kind of mathy style riffs. A lot of the time you're hearing my music, I never start on the one. I'm always starting on the and of four from the bar before in a lot of my music. And that really annoys the, the drummer in my band. <laughs> yeah, well, well, the old drummer anyway, I should say, Andrew. But yeah. Uh, and when you tap stuff out as well, it all looks odd because it's always a, a bar before. I have to tie everything. All my bars are tied, basically, <laughs> over to the next one. Yeah, that kind of thing. Syncopation. People say there's a lot of our timing. Yes, it's involved, but not as much as people make out to be. A lot of the time... It's just 4-4, four, four. and if you hear something quite funny sounding in 4-4, four, four, usually that's just where the uh, the the the, um, the count has been subdivided, so the bars have been, you know, the count has been, um, the 4-4 four, four, four count has been divided into lesser counts where the accents are basically within that 4-4 four, 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 four bar, make it sound like it's an odd timing, but it's not actually, well, it technically is, but, it, you know, if you, if you want to count like ridiculously fast, then you could do it that way. But uh. you know, if you take the song like Never Meant by American Football, like the guitar part, the main one is in 4-4. Four, four, and then the one, the contrasting rhythm that comes in, you can you can put that into a bar of 4-4. Four, four, but like where the first beat starts, it starts on the the the, the first beat of the first bar with the other guitar but then when he hits the second note when um mike hits the second note it's on the and of four of that first bar so that's what makes it sound 
quite odd because you expect that beat to come on the first of the second bar if you get me so these kind of things if you're looking for a really simple definition of that and then you'll see if you look at the tab for that and look at the music sorry is probably more important you'll see where those accents are in in the beat that he's playing when he's hitting the lower strings there are you know this is on on the regular time a lot of the time but then it will be in between beats or in odd places basically so it's syncopated like i said over just a a continuous um eighth picking eighth note picking pattern of of the other guitar the the you know the famous riff that everybody knows <clears throat> All right, so a couple more questions. Now I get going. <laughs> Anus Repair says, yeah, we still got now CDs in America. Well, what is it now? Now 1,000? It was like 40-something when, when I was listening to them when I was like 12, 13 years old. <laughs> Sota says, I've been changing the tuning of my guitar quite frequently, and I heard that you should think of strings as pipe cleaners, so it breaks easier the more you change tunings. Is that true? Um, I'm not... Uh, to the best of my knowledge, I don't really know. Obviously, you put more tension on a string than it's supposed to have, then that's going to wear out the life of it quicker, I would have thought. But I could be wrong about that. But um, yeah, I get asked quite often about changing gauge of strings when I change tunings. But uh, it's not, if you're not making drastic changes, just stick with your, you know, the, the regular gauge. If you're using nines or tens, just stick with that. If you're only tuning up a tone or down a tone, so up two frets or down two frets, that's not going to do much. 42 says, what's the best chorus pedal in your opinion? Uh, well, I've not tried many. I'd like to try the Julia by Warus Audio. I've heard great things about that. But I use the Boss CS, CS, CE5, sorry, but I'd like to get the CE1, the Wazacraft one, but it's just a bit too expensive. And I've, I'm happy with what that one does, to be honest. <laughs> I think they're at now 70. Oh, okay. I guess it's once a month, isn't it? Uh, 42 says Vox AC15 with green or blue back speaker. Um, Vox is quite mid, mid range pronounced, their overall tone, I would say. A green back is what you find usually in a Marshall, from the best of my knowledge, and they tend to be more mid scooped, so maybe that will sound better. But I think I can't remember if green is more aggressive sounding than blue. Uh, this is something that I will research because I want to know that myself, the, the different speaker types and what they do. But yeah, I think what does a Vox AC15 usually come with it? With it, with what what does it usually have in it? But I wouldn't worry too much about speakers all that much you know you'll find you'll just go down a rabbit hole and you think like this speaker is going to be the best speaker just spend more time on playing and tweak the sound you know you can turn down the treble and the mids on the amp itself if it's sounding too bright or too mid punchy and also you can you can tame that by many other methods as well like various pedals and um you know, not using any buffers and stuff and long cables, that's going to take off a bit of top end. All these kind of things are options before you go and you know, swap out a speaker, right? You know, yeah, I'm sure we've all been there where we we think like, you know, you get your mindset on like, this will definitely give me the thing that I want, the sound that I want. And then it turns out not to be true. And then you're left very disappointed. And then you've got something that you need to sell. And then that's just another pain in the ass, right? So, all right. Well, I think that will be it. So um, I just want to say thanks for everybody that joined. Um, I might change the time I do the live stream, but the problem is uh, with my time in Korea, you know, it's, it's 11 p.m. on a Sunday already, but now it's it's early morning. And my biggest um, audience, from what I can tell my uh, demographics, is from America. So that's not so good. So I'll have a think about it, but I've been doing it on Sunday every so often. Uh, sorry, Sunday for the past four weeks. And um, I feel like the the view account can be quite low. But if I do it at a different time, perhaps that would be better and more people can join that way. So anyways, uh, like I said, I will make this into audio form. Hopefully that will be up tomorrow morning for you. So if you want to listen to this uh, whilst you're traveling to work or whatever you're doing, you'll be able to do that. And I'll take out all the awkward dead air in between. So it would be obviously less than an an hour that way. So again, that's available on iTunes and there's links available as links for that 
down in the description. So, yeah, hope you all have a fantastic week, and hopefully I'll see you uh, next Sunday if I do it next Sunday. But I will think about it, and perhaps I will change the time, but I will let you know. And thanks for joining. Uh, see you later. Goodbye.